Good afternoon. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. For those who don't know me, I'm John Allen, National Chairman of the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society and also Chairman of the London and Home Counties branch who are hosting this presentation. So on behalf of the branch, welcome to the third of our national and international online meetings for the winter season. In particular, I'd like to welcome all those who do not normally attend branch meetings and those who may be watching from overseas. And I'm also your speaker for today. So without further introduction, let's get started. Now, Switzerland is the country that most people think of first when thinking about European paddle steamers. Indeed, it does have the most in Europe, but Germany is not far behind. If you add in screw steamers, steam railways and other forms of vintage transport, then Germany really is a mecca for steam fans and fans of vintage transport generally. So today I'm going to take you on a whistle-stop tour of what is there to be sampled and a few things from the past as well. So off we go. Our nearest operating paddle vessel in Germany is Goethe, the last operating paddler on the Rhine. After being retired with mechanical problems in 1989, she was restored to steam and returned to service in 1996. She is seen here in Dusseldorf on a promotional visit that year. She normally sails between Koblenz and the wine-growing town of Rudersheim. So let's take a trip on her. <laughs> Goethe was built in 1913 at Cologne-Deutz by Sachsenberg. You can see she's now fitted with a bow thruster, as she's seen here leaving Camp Bornhofen. The Rhine Gorge is a UNESCO World Heritage Site lined with castles and vineyards. When she was refitted, her interior was thoroughly modernised, but in a retro style. She is a very comfortable ship, and, as we were told, you can eat everywhere. Her engines were compound diagonal, from Sachsenberg's works at Roslau on the Elbe. Sadly, after the 2008 season, they were replaced by diesel hydraulic machinery, a real loss to steam enthusiasts. It is hoped that they will be exhibited at the Cologne City Museum. Nevertheless, she remains a nice ship sailing in a beautiful area, as we see her passing Falzgrafenstein Castle, a toll collecting station dating back to 1326, with Gutenfels Castle dating from 1220 up on the hill behind. Goethe is the last operating paddler on the Rhine, but there are two more paddlers that survive in static condition. At Mannheim, the river Necker joins the Rhine, and just before it does so, lies the museum ship Mannheim, formerly the Köln Düsseldorf paddle steamer Mainz. She was built in 1927 by Christoph Rutoff at Mainz. She was withdrawn in 1980 and opened them as a museum in 1986. One steam paddle tug survives on each of the rivers Rhine, Danube and Elbe. Oscar Huber, dating from 1922 and the last paddle tug on the Rhine, was withdrawn in 1966 and is now a major exhibit at the Museum of German Inland Waterways Shipping at Duisburg Ruhrort. Mainline steam in Germany is not unusual. Not as extensive as here in the UK may be, but it's always worth checking local advertising to see if anything is happening while you're there. In 2010, Trier was the centre of the Damp Spectacle, celebrations commemorating 175 years of German railways, and they were spectacular. 
Here we see a Prussian P8 460 dating from 1919 heading back into Trier. And if you were daft enough to get up before dawn, the sound of birdsong was shattered by the wonderful sight and sound of a steam train leaving the Hauptbahnhof. weather was not that great, as this 01 Pacific found out later. These Pacifics were the stars of the show, running trains at full cry along the Moselle main line to Koblenz. Finally, we see a Kriegslok, dating from 1943 in the scenic Piper Mountains. The Kriegslok 210 were the equivalent of our War Department 210s. And now for something completely different. Wuppertal translates as Wupper Valley, and the city is actually a series of several towns along the banks of the Wupper River, all connected by a novel space savings transport solution using the space above the river itself. The system opened to the public in 1901, and the Kaiserwagen, which we see here, was used by Kaiser Wilhelm II on a trial run the previous year. It is now used for charters and other special runs, including that German all-time favourite, Café und Kuchen, or Coffee and Cakes. Although most of the system is above the river, there is a short stretch of line above the street. Let us now go south to the Alpine lakes. Although now based in Austria, Hohenfiel entered service in 1913 for the German railway operators on Lake Constance and still visits Germany and Switzerland. She was built by Escher Wies of Zurich and was withdrawn in 1962. 
She was restored and returned to operation for special sailings and charters in 1990. Friedrichshaven is home to the Zeppelin Museum, and here we see Hokenfield with a Zeppelin in the background. You can take a Zeppelin flight from the airport. Hokenfield has been beautifully restored, and the standard of catering is very high. Her engine room viewing gallery is so clean, you get your dinner from it. We now go to the Kiemse, where a steam tram dating from 1887 and built by Krauss in Munich takes us from the station at Priem to the harbour. The Kiemse Bahn is the oldest continuously operated steam tramway in regular operation. At the harbour, we find the diesel paddler Ludwig Fessler, which was commissioned in spring 1927. She was built by the Theodore Hitzler shipyard in Regensburg. Her original steam engine came from J.A. Maffei in Munich. In 1972 and 73, it was replaced by a modern diesel engine, and it now powers the Swiss paddle steamer Neuchatel. But the lake is stunning, and the ship boasts a splendid saloon. The Amazé, accessible by suburban train from Munich, boasts two paddlers. Diesen was built in 1908 by J.A. Maffei of Munich. In 1974-75, her steam machinery was replaced with diesel hydraulic, but she remained a very atmospheric ship with some nice details. In 2005-06, she was rebuilt with another new diesel hydraulic unit. She is effectively a new ship, incorporating some parts from the old diesel. Nevertheless, she is very comfortable and well furnished. Hersching entered service in 2002 and is a very good example of a modern paddler, albeit diesel powered. She is well appointed, and if you're not going to have a steam engine to look at, why not fill the space with a bar, complete with bar stools with a view into the paddle boxes, and telegraph beer fonts. If you want to build a brand new paddler, she's not a bad starting point. Ruthof is our second steam paddle tug, and the last one on the German stretch of the Danube. She was built in Regensburg in 1923 for Bayesian Lloyd, but went to Hungarian ownership in 1956. She was saved from the scrapyard in 1979, and is now back home as the centrepiece of the Regensburg Museum of Danube Shipping. Moving north again, Freya was built in 1905 by J&K Smit of Kinderdijk in the Netherlands for service out of Littingen as the Veskertschelder. In the 1930s, she was sold for use as a static bunkering station. She was bought in 1988 and returned for service out of Rotterdam in 1990 as the Nederlander. She was sold on again in 2000 and is now based in Kiel, offering a wide-ranging variety of cruises on the Kiel Canal and further afield. We see her at Rendsburg, passing the signal station, which plays the anthem of each passing ship. And here she is, passing under the Rendsburg transporter bridge. She is fitted with a small compound steam engine dating from 1926, but also has a diesel screw, which is mainly used for propulsion. 
Her paddle wheels are also small and based, I believe, on those on Kingsway Castle. She is well restored and the standard of catering is very high. With the buffet making rather a grand entrance through the floor. She has ventured to the River Ems, and we see her leaving Emden. Here we see her passing the Ems flood barrier, which is similar in operation to the Thames flood barrier. She has also visited the Schley an inlet from the Baltic leading up to Schleswig. Here she passes the ferry at Mizunda. And here, passing the windmill called Nikola near Schleswig. Near the Danish border is Flensburg, which hosts every two years the Dampfrundrum, a festival of steamships. Sometimes a steam train runs through the streets, complete with a red flagman. Alexandra, dating from 1908, is the local steamer. She runs regular trips throughout the summer. very comfortable saloons. There is always a collection of small steamboats. Shahorn is a survey vessel dating from 1908 and is normally based in Hamburg. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
visiting from Denmark is the Skjelskor, built in 1915, which normally offers trips from Friedrichsund. <laughs> Also from Denmark is the steam icebreaker Bjorn, built in Bremerhaven in 1908 for service in Randersfjord. <laughs> Boroisund also dates from 1908 and is based in Oslo. Bussard is a boy-laying vessel, commissioned in 1906, and was built by Meyerwerft in Papenburg. She worked from Kiel until 1979, when she was handed over to the Kiel Maritime Museum. <laughs> The steam icebreaker Val was commissioned in 1938 for service as an icebreaker on the Kiel Canal. She is now based in Bremerhaven and offers regular trips. <laughs> is a regular visitor to Flensburg, and as with most of the ships there, engine room visits are allowed, giving excellent views of her triple expansion steam engine and her steering engine. Stettin is a steam icebreaker, built there in 1933. She is based in Hamburg now and offers charters and public cruises on special occasions. Ja, ja. 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 
She is the largest coal-fired ship in Europe. Let us return to Hamburg, where we find St Georg, the oldest steamboat operating in Germany, and the last of the steamers giving cruises on the Alster, the lake in the centre of Hamburg. She was built in 1876. So let us take a trip. <laughs> Langsam voraus. built at Laubergast near Dresden and dates from 1926. The DDR, or East Germany, held on to steam longer than many places in the West, particularly so on the narrow gauge. The largest network remains in the Harz Mountains. The mainstay of the steam locomotive fleet is 17 210 2 tank locomotives built during the 1950s. <laughs> There are others though, including this 262 tank engine built by Krupp in 1939. Malays, dating from the turn of the last century, are used for special trips. This one was heading for the Brocken Mountain. <laughs> Another Malay, dating from 1918, is used in regular service. Two smaller 060 tank engines survive, both built by Henschel in 1914. But they're rarely used, although I did find this one on an empty stock working. <coughs> Mm -hmm. 
standing on the carriage balconies is permitted, and the sound of a steam engine working hard is something not to be missed. If two trains are timed to leave a junction a couple of minutes apart, it's an excuse for a double departure. Usually one of them is a diesel, but if they're both steam trains, you're in for a treat. So let's just sit back and watch. After refloating Medway Queen, I hoped I would never see a sunken paddle steamer again. But here, in 1997, we found Laba, the last coal-fired steamer in Prague, sunk at the shipyard on the river Vltava. We feared the worst. Fortunately, the following year, we found her on the slip at Laubergast. She was being worked on. Restoration continued in Minden, and she re-entered service as Vappen von Minden in 2001. Here we see her on the Middle Land Canal in Minden. Her saloons have been very tastefully furnished. Her engine is a compound diagonal. She sometimes sails in conjunction with steam trains.
here we see Vappen von Minden leaving Vlotho after connecting with the steam train. In 2015, she was sold for use in Bremen and was renamed Weserstolz. She seemed to sail rather infrequently and we failed to sail on her there completely. She's currently, I gather, up for sale. Weserstolz remains on the River Weser, which is where our next paddler started her long service history. Built in Dresden in 1900, Kaiser Wilhelm entered service on the Weser at Hamlin. She steamed there until 1970, when she was bought for preservation by a group led by the late, great Dr Ernst Schmidt. He sailed as purser, was very hospitable to UK enthusiasts, and his English was excellent. If we went to buy a ticket, he would always say, In football, a red card means leave the field. On a paddle steamer, a red card means you are welcome as our guest, and a couple of red complimentary tickets would be handed over. The souvenir shop always needed to be well supported to ensure that we paid our way. She operates with a volunteer crew, mainly at weekends. Her home base is Lauenburg, a pretty town on the Elbe, within easy reach of Hamburg. She is one of only five coal-fired paddle steamers left in the world, our own Kingswear Castle being one of the others. The last Lauenburg paddle steamer was Hugo Bazardau, built in 1925 at Dresden Ubergau. She served on the Elbe sailing between Hamburg, Lauenburg and Hitzacker until 1961. Remarkably, she still survives in static use at Nijmegen in the Netherlands. The Kaiser's engine is compound diagonal. <laughs> The steam steering engine has been retained and on special occasions is open for viewing. Her saloons retain an original appearance and her homemade catering is highly recommended. Here we can see the remains of that old favourite, Café und Kuchen. In recent years, her management have been quite adventurous and under the command of Captain Marcus Reich, she has wandered away from her home waters. In 2015, she returned to Dresden for the first time since her building, and here we see her passing Meissen. She met up with the Dresden paddler Diesbar on the approach to Dresden itself. It was a unique occasion. Will there ever be another meeting of two coal-fired paddlers in the future? Here we see her passing Königstein with the Dresden paddler Meissen at the landing stage.
Here she passes Kurut Ratan, exchanging whistles with the reaction ferry Bergland. And here we see her passing Pilnitz on the way back into Dresden. And here she is approaching the church of Maria on the water. In the 2002 floods, it was the church of Maria in the water. In 2016, she got a lift in the Scharnebeck ship's lift, which connects the Elbe lateral canal with the main Elbe itself. The canal was built so that West German ships could avoid the part of the Elbe wholly in East Germany. This was not a first for the Kaiser. She'd been there when the canal opened in 1975. She now returns with the lift going down. And here we can see an external view of the lift in operation. In 2017, she made an epic voyage to Berlin Spandau. Here she arrives at Wittenberger. A number of low bridges were encountered, requiring her wheelhouse to be partially dismantled. You can see that measurements were taken to ensure that we could get under the bridges on the return journey. Whilst en route, we pass the cruise paddle ship Elbe Princess, built in 2016. She is a genuine paddler with two stern wheels. She cruises from Berlin to Prague or Hamburg and is on our list of things to do. We also pass the Steamtug Gustav, which is based in Potsdam. She was launched in 1908 at the Wiemann Brothers shipyard in Brandenburg. We see the Kaiser in Spandau, which was as far as she could go into Berlin. Here we see her arriving at Brandenburg on her way back home. And finally, we see her in Magdeburg, 
with its four riverside churches. Magdeburg is home to the last of the three steam paddle tugs that survive in Germany. Württemberg was built by Sachsenberg brothers at Rosslau for service on the Elbe. She steamed until 1974, when she was brought onto dry land. She was damaged in the 2002 floods, but is now open again. Apparently, she always seems to be closed when we visit. On our first visit to Dresden in 1991, not long after the fall of communism, Lenin and his two comrades still greeted passengers arriving at the main station. Dresden was once regarded as one of the most beautiful cities in Europe, and in some lights it still was. Dresden has the largest and oldest fleet of paddle steamers in the world, and they made a wonderful sight along the old city waterfront. But the Trummerfrau, or Rubble Lady, reminded us of the devastation wrought by the RAF on the night of the 13th and 14th of February 1945. It was mostly women who cleared the rubble. The old town had been left, with ivy growing on the old buildings. With reunification, money was made available to restore the old city. The famous Frauenkirche, or Church of Our Lady, had been left deliberately as a monument to the devastation of war. But with reunification came the decision to rebuild it, and it's now hard to imagine the skyline without it. The Kozel Palace is now a very good restaurant. And so is this building, not a mosque, but a tobacco factory. So what about the steamers? A look at the departure board shows cruises operating upstream as far as Schmilke on the Czech border and downstream to Riesa. The long runs into Saxon Switzerland were in the hands of three diesel electric paddlers built at Rosslau. Karl Marx, Friedrich Engels and Ernst Talman were built in 1963 and Wilhelm Pieck in 1964. They were built in 1960s style, with plastic seats and a dance floor on the upper deck. Three vessels were renamed in 1991 after the fall of the communist government, with Ernst Thalmann becoming Auguste Stark, Wilhelm Pieck became Grafin Kersel, and Friedrich Engels became J. F. Böttger. Auguste Stark and Grafin Kersel were both scrapped in 1998, but J. F. Böttger can still be seen from the river moored outside the harbour at Dresden Neustadt as a youth hostel accommodation ship. So what about the steamers? Well, only four were in operation during our visit in 1991, the largest of them, Dresden, only operated at weekends, a waste of a lovely ship, with its pleasant lounges. Weltfrieden was the only ship operating to retain its politically correct name, World Peace. But it retained its oscillating engine, complete with hedgehog mascot on the air pump big end. Sister ship Meissen shared the runs to Pilnitz Palace with Weltfrieden. Her interior was slightly unusual with this stained glass panel and painting. She too had an oscillating engine with two mascots on the big end. Both ships retained their steam steering engines and all the steamers were coal-fired with proper bunkering barges. They used briquettes rather than lump coal, and here we see Diesbar taking on supplies. Diesbar was the star of the show, 
and we were lucky to get a sail on her. Indeed, her paddle box provided a very unusual vantage point. With her pitch decks and her panelled saloon, she had been restored to museum standard in the late 1980s. But she had one more unique feature. A doorway in her engine room bulkhead gave a great view of her simple oscillating engine, built by John Penn and Sons of Greenwich and reused from two previous ships, dating from 1841. But there were more paddlers to be seen, paddle tugs no less. In the 1950s, a fleet of paddle tugs was built at Melnik in what was then Czechoslovakia for use on the rivers Voltava and the Elbe. Their paddles allowed a shallow draught, but their stern wheels allowed access through the locks on the Voltava. This one is Orlik, dating from 1957. She is preserved in the Netherlands. Jezeniki dates from 1956. She is also preserved, this time in Berlin, and is apparently operational. Their six-cylinder Skoda diesel engines gave them plenty of power. Beskidi also dates from 1956 and was the last of them to undertake commercial towage on the Elbe. She was particularly useful in times of low water, something which afflicts the Elbe on occasions. They operated with their own barge to provide additional steerage. I'm not sure if she is still operational. I haven't seen her for a while. It was easy to see that not all was well with the White Fleet. Five steamers were laid up in the harbour at Neustadt. The oldest ship in the fleet, Stadt Valen, did see service in 1991, but not when we were there. Pirna was also serviceable, but didn't see service in 91 or 1992. Kurat Raten was, we were told, kaput. Whilst Junger Pioneer, which dated from 1898, and Schmilke, one year older, had been out of service since 1988 and 1977, respectively. They were never to see service again. At the shipyard at Laubergast, there was a similar sad story. Leipzig, sister ship to Dresden, and Karl Marx, the fourth diesel paddler, which never sailed under its intended new name of Daniel Poppelman, were both on the slip, but work had stopped as cash was not available. We shall see Leipzig later. And Karl Marx also survived, and is now berthed here in the Neustadt harbour as another youth hostel accommodation ship. We can see Schmilke alongside her, but both she and Younger Pioneer were scrapped in 2001. But there was one glimmer of hope at Laubergast. Also on the slipway was Kaiser Friedrich, a steamer from Berlin. She was being worked on, so let us see her when she was finished. Kaiser Friedrich dates from 1886 and was built in Stettin. Here we see her leaving her berth in the Nikolai Quarter in the centre of Berlin.
After restoration, she re-entered service in 1994, and we see her here with the rebuilt Reichstag in the background, complete with Sir Norman Foster's dome. Her engines were obtained from a Dutch dredger and date from around 1930. Here we see her with the Aunt Alexander Platz Tower in the background. She demonstrates her folding funnel, which is manually operated. Whilst in Berlin, here is another preserved steam tug, Nordstern, dating from 1902 and built by Wiemann Brothers in Brandenburg. She too was operating public cruises. Sadly, Kaiser Friedrich was withdrawn in 2012, and I believe that Nordstern has also been withdrawn. Operating steamers is never easy. In 1992, it was announced that the White Fleet would be part privatised, with Contiline putting in 20 million Deutschmarks to restore the steamers. So what would we find in 1993? Well, apart from anything else, tower cranes and scaffolding dominated the skyline and the waterfront. But the steamers looked different. Dresden was still the flagship of the fleet, and externally perhaps was the least altered. She is seen here passing Pilnitz Palace, a favourite destination, and the summer residence of the Saxon ruler August der Stark, or August the Strong. Dresden was built in 1926 at Laubergast. <laughs> Her engines are compound diagonal and they come from the Ubigau works downstream from Dresden. The best news was that Leipzig was back in service. She is the youngest of the steamers, being built at Laubergast in 1929. She had the misfortune to be bombed by the RAF in 1945, but this may have saved her from being commandeered by the Russians. Her sister ship, Dresden, was similarly saved by catching fire after the war. Leipzig, too, had a mascot on her engine. Like Dresden, her compound diagonal engine comes from Ubergau. And here we see her approaching Blasewitz, upstream from the Blue Wonder Bridge, a landmark completed in 1893. The bridge escaped wartime destruction by the SS when two people cut the wires to the explosives. So let us admire her as she slowly overtakes us.
Veltfrieden was also back in service, but now named Pilnitz, a name she had carried from the late 1920s. She was rebuilt in Magdeburg. We see her here appropriately passing Pilnitz Palace. She was built at Blasowitz in 1886 as a Königin Carola. Her engine was manufactured in Dresden Neustadt and was originally low pressure but compounded in 1912. <laughs> Happily, she retained her hedgehog mascot on the air pump big end. Meissen was also back in service and is a sister ship to Pilnitz, built at Blasowitz a year earlier in 1885 as Koenig Albert and with similar machinery. She was rebuilt in Brandenburg. We see her here appropriately leaving Meissen. The four larger ships, Dresden, Leipzig, Pilnitz and Meissen, were all rebuilt to a similar layout with similarly furnished saloons. She is seen here passing Strela on a rare sailing out of Risa. The flagpoles she is passing commemorate the first meeting of US and Soviet forces on the 25th of April 1945. The slipway at Laubergast in 1993 hosted the three smaller sisters Stadtvalen, Pirna and Kurut Raten all being worked on before their return to service the following year. But there was also another, much smaller steamer there as well. Valen Bastai is the last of the steam ferries which plied the Elbe. She was built in 1925 at Ubergau for service from Stadt Valen to the railway station on the opposite bank of the Elbe. We saw her there in 1991. In 1995, she returned to service, and we see her here leaving her base at Bad Schandau. She has bridge control of her engine, and is coal-fired. She operated some public cruises, but in later years had been charter only. She is not currently operational. Sachsenwald is a steam tug, built by Wiemann Brothers, in Brandenburg in 1914. She operated on the Elbe, Mittel Land Canal and Oder. She was laid up in 1972 but eventually restored and returned to steam in 1991 operating trips out of Stadt Valen. She also towed both Meissen and Pilnitz to their rebuilds in 1992-3. We never sailed on her, as she was susceptible to the low water levels on the Elbe, and in 1995 she left her home river to operate trips out of Potsdam. In 2001 she was replaced there by Gustav, which we saw earlier, and returned to the Elbe. In 2004 she was lengthened by five metres to cope better with low water levels and we see her here in 2008. In 2021, she is advertised to operate from Pirna, upriver, to Zhensko or Dziechin across the border in the Czech Republic. Well, let's get these out of the way. 
The only bad news which came with the takeover of the White Fleet was the demise of the 1960s diesel paddlers. The two scrapped vessels were replaced by two large motor ships, Auguste Stark and Graffin Kurzel. They are not, perhaps, things of beauty, but they are very popular and can be used throughout the year as they have plenty of covered accommodation. They were originally used on the long runs to Saxon Switzerland, but they are slower than the paddlers and the timings had to be extended. Nowadays, they tend to be used for the short city sightseeing tours or on the Pilnitz shuttle, where their large capacity is useful. Pirna returned to service with her two sisters in 1994. She was built at Blasowitz in 1898 as König Albert. We see her here, near Königstein, with a S-Bahn train passing. She has a compound oscillating engine from the Ubergau works. Her layout and furnishings are similar to her two sisters, but different to the four larger ships that we have seen previously. And here we see her leaving Königstein upstream towards Bad Schandau. Let's just watch her. Trips are run beyond Bad Shandau into the Czech Republic, usually as far as Jechin. And before the Czech Republic joined the EU, Duty Free was sold on board at this kiosk. And Pirna was always allocated to the run, as we see her here in Jechin. Occasionally trips are run even further, to Usti and beyond. And here we see Leipzig approaching Usti on one such run. In 1991, many of the ferries were reaction ferries, where the flow of the river provides the propulsion to the ferry which is attached to an upstream anchor by a long buoyed line. This is one of the few remaining and is just over the border in the Czech Republic. We leave Pirna here at Kurut Raten, where she is approaching the pontoon as her sister ship, Kurut Raten, leaves. <laughs> now we see Kurut Raten leaving the pretty resort from which he takes her name, and passing the Bastai Rocks, one of the landmarks in Saxon Switzerland. She was built at Blasowitz in 1896, and was originally named, appropriately, Bastai. <laughs> Two well-known PSPS members, the editor of Paddle Wheels on the left and Ashley Gill on the right, look lovingly at her compound oscillating engine from the Ubergau works. So let us do the same. Stadt 
Valen is the oldest ship in the fleet, dating from 1879. She was built at Blazowitz with the name Dresden. We see her here passing Eckberg Castle, built in Tudor style, and one of three castles which sit side by side between Dresden and Luschwitz. In 1993, there was a surprise interloper at Laubergas shipyard. Krippin was built at Blazowitz in 1892 as Tetchen. She was withdrawn in 1979 and sold for static use, and she ended up on dry land. She was bought by a family of restaurateurs from Meissen, and we see her here before restoration. She was cut into three sections and restored at Oldenburg. In 1994, she entered service at Meissen, operating short cruises. Her saloons are very comfortably furnished, but her operation in Meissen was not continued. In 1995 and 96, she embarked on a long trip, visiting places as far afield as the Rhine, where we see her leaving Koblenz and Prague, where she is seen here with the two resident steamers, Voltava and Vichyrad. From 1997 to 1999, she was chartered by Köln Dusseldorf and operated short trips in Frankfurt. Eventually, she was sold to the SDG in Dresden and joined their fleet. Often she runs downstream to Zoislitz, but on this occasion she was operating in Saxon, Switzerland, and we see her here passing the former hotel at Zeichen. Her engine is very unusual, being a simple expansion oscillating engine. We joined her for a charter downstream, beyond Strela, to Mühlberg, a very rare occasion, but the home port of her captain that day. Finally, we see her passing Ubigau, on her usual route downstream from Dresden to Zoislitz. But look carefully at the large building on the left. It is on the site of the former Ubigau shipyard, as this map shows. And it's the machine shop where many of the engines that we have seen today were built. The site is listed, and the crane which was used to lift the engines into the ship's hulls has been preserved. There is another noteworthy building to be seen, the other side of town, in Johannstadt. This is the former terminal building for the seaplane service, which ran from Dresden to Altona near Hamburg, with a stopover in Magdeburg for refuelling. The service only lasted a year from 1925 to 1926, but the building still survives. There are other things worthy of transport interest in and around Dresden. The Dresden Suspension Railway, or Schwaberbahn, is a suspended funicular connecting the districts of Luschwitz and Oberluschwitz. It is one of the oldest suspension railways having entered service in 1901, the same year as the Wuppertal Schwaberbahn, which we saw earlier.
Unlike Wuppertal, where the cars travel independently, here the two cars are attached to each other by a cable, which runs around a drum at the top of the incline. You get excellent views from the top of the Blue Wonder Bridge and any steamers passing Blasovic. The Dresden Funicular Railway is a conventional funicular, connecting the district of Loschwitz with its station near to the Schwaberbahn to Weisse Hirsch. It opened in 1895. We are going to look at three steam railways in the neighbourhood. The first is in Dresden itself in the Grosser Garten, or Large Garden, a pleasant park. The Park Railway was the first communist pioneer railway in the DDR, where teenagers learned professional railway skills. The two remaining steam engines are Pacifics, built by Krauss in Munich in 1925. Weisseritz Valley Railway connects Freitel Hainsberg near Dresden on the S-Bahn with the Spa of Kipsdorf in the Ore Mountains. <laughs> Ascension Day in Germany is also known as Father's Day, or more specifically, Men's Day, where men go out in large groups with trolleys packed with beer to go for a walk in the mountains. As you can see, the train was very busy. <laughs> Lusnitz Valley Railway runs from Radboil Ost on the S-Bahn line to Meissen to Radberg. special trains, two Saxon mayor locos are used. The leading one, dating from 1899, and the trailing one, 1921. Diesbar is not the oldest ship in the fleet. She was built at Blasowitz in 1884, but she remains the jewel in the crown, and if she is in service, a sailing is a must. She is still coal-fired. We see her here, approaching Diesbar itself, a short walk from Zoislitz. <laughs> her 
Her funnel is still cranked by hand. The others are all electric. And unlike the other ships, her steam steering engine is still working. And of course, she still has her John Penn oscillating engine dating from 1841. Although sadly, the viewing door in the bulkhead is gone, but you still get an excellent view. We cannot leave Dresden without a parade or two. On the 1st of May each year, the main summer season opens with a fleet parade. Just sit back and enjoy the spectacle. In August each year, a steamer festival is held, with stalls on the Tarasanufa and, of course, a steamer parade. But look carefully this time and you'll see a foreigner. In 2014, the Prague paddler Voltava put in an appearance. <laughs> and finish this talk with the classic view of a paddler leaving the city. This time it's the visiting Voltava. But her story, as they say, is for another time.
Thank you for watching. I hope that I may have inspired you to take a trip to Germany when we're allowed to travel abroad once again. Closer to home? Let's hope that we'll be allowed to sail on our own two paddle steamers sometime soon. In the meantime, let's look forward to our final talk of this season on Thursday the 20th of May at 7.30 in the evening, when Paul Semple, General Manager of Waverley Excursions, will update us on Waverley's winter refit and plans for the 2021 season. If you've enjoyed this talk and you're not yet a member of the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society, please consider joining us. I hope to see many of you on board Kingsway Castle and Waverley in 2021. So for now, stay safe and see you soon.